Hi, my name is Adam Fink, and we're here at the Oakland Zoo talking about the Colombian red-tailed boas. Our boas, we have two here. Uh, one of our boas is about nine and a half feet long. Our other one, the one we're looking at here, is about eight and a half feet long. Um, our largest one is 46 pounds. She is, the one we're looking at here, she is 28 pounds. Um, they can get a little bit larger. They can be about uh, 10 to 11 feet long when they're full size. Uh, full size, they'll weigh about 60 pounds. The patterns on these snakes are brown and black mainly. Um, their patterns kind of mimic the forest floors. These guys are from South America and um, they primarily live on the forest floor where there's a lot of leaf litter and so their pattern is built to blend in with the dead leaves and the shadows that are cast on the ground. The iridescence or the light kind of sh the sunlight shining on their, their scales make it look very bluish green. But all snakes and amphibians are cold-blooded. What that means is it doesn't mean that their blood is cold, it just means that they get their um, internal body temperature from the outside. The proper term for it is ectothermic, ecto meaning outside, thermic meaning heat. So these guys can't regulate their own body temperature with, um, from the inside like mammals and birds do. They have to get their heat from outside sources. That's why she's out here today in the sun. She can um, get nice and warm if she wants to. She can go in the pool to cool down. But all of her um, heat regulation has to come from the outside. Um, here at the zoo, our snakes generally, generally eat large rats. In the wild, they would eat any small mammal or small birds that they could catch. These are constrictors, so that means that they grab, under their, they grab their prey with the mouth and they use their very powerful body to squeeze their prey. Generally, um, their prey's heart will actually stop beating before they, stop, um, before they suffocate, but either way, it ends up killing their prey and then they can eat it. Here at the zoo, we only feed our animals dead. So we don't ever feed live rats or live mice or live chickens or anything to any of our animals. Everything is frozen and we thaw it out and the snakes eat it no problem. <clears throat> the reason we only feed our snakes and other reptiles as well as all of our other animals at the zoo only dead animals is because a lot of times the um, the prey animals will try to fight back. Rats have very large teeth and they can actually hurt snakes and a lot of times when snakes are fed live food they end up getting a lot of injuries from their food. It's kind of like a hamburger attacking you when you go to McDonald's and no one wants to see that. Sometimes their food doesn't agree with them. All snakes and actually some lizards have forked tongues. The reason for that is they use their tongue to smell their surroundings. The reason that their, their tongue is forked is because they can tell if they're getting more scent on the left side of their tongue than the right side of their tongue, they know that the item they're looking for is more to the left. Definitely hone in on their prey items much better that way. Yes, there's, their tongues do help direct them to their food. But they do stick it out, but there's a little flicking involved, and that does help to collect the scent particles. Large bows like this one can actually crawl in a perfectly straight line, where smaller snakes, they don't have the musculature to be able to crawl in a perfectly straight line. They always move in more of an S-shaped pattern. One other really cool thing about snakes are, is that they can, um, they can eat prey items that are larger than their head. Snakes have an extra bone in their jaw, so they can not just open their mouth like this, but they can open it all the way up.